Hello everybody, today I'm going to be installing the software for the Voron 2.4 3D printer. Before diving into the software part, let's take a look at the hardware. This is the underbelly of the printer. Here all the hardware components reside. For the software installation, mostly we are interested in two of them. The Raspberry Pi and the microcontroller board that drives the motors. This green thing here at the top is the Raspberry Pi. Most of the printer software will be running on the Raspberry Pi, so the first thing I'll need to do is extract the SD card from it. Next I'll focus on the microcontroller board. This one has all the motor drivers installed on it and uh, it also contains an SD card that I need to extract for the software installation. Okay, so the starting point for this is the vorondesign.com webpage and that's what I have opened here and I'll go to the documentation and under the build software installation and I'm going to install fluid so I'll tap on that. First thing from here is to open up the Kiao repository. The first prerequisite is to install the Raspberry Pi imager. To do that, you just tap on the link and it opens up the Raspberry Pi OS official webpage. You can download and install it from here. I already have it installed, so I'm just gonna open it up. So, first thing I'm going to do is choose the device I'm going to install the OS on. In my case, it's going to be a Raspberry Pi 3. Next, I'm going to choose the OS. I'm going to go with the Raspberry Pi Legacy Lite for my case. And now choose the storage. This is the SD card from the Raspberry Pi we are choosing as the storage device tap on that and click on next. Now for the customization part and tap on edit settings. In general for the host name I'm going to choose uh, Voron Pi. This is the name of the printer that's going to be available on the local network. Next I'm going to configure the wireless LAN so the first parameter is the SSID, this is the name of the local wireless network and the password for the local wireless network, this is how the printer connects to the network. So we're telling it the username and password and I'm going to choose the country for the configuration. For some reason, if you don't choose the country correctly, it might not be able to connect to the, to the wireless network. Set locale settings and under services, enable SSH and use password authentication. And now in general, we'll set the username and password for the SSH. I'll set my username here and the password. That's it. Tap on save and apply the configuration settings. Yes. And yes again. Okay, so the operation has been successful. Next, I need to extract the SD card from the computer and plug it back into the Raspberry Pi and start up the printer. When the printer starts, the Raspberry Pi will try to connect to the local network and it will be available to connect from my terminal. So I'm firing up the terminal right here and I'm trying to ping my Raspberry Pi. Remember uh, the name I gave the Raspberry Pi is Voron Pi. So in my case, I'll ping voronpi.local. 
the result of the ping command is successful, it did find the Raspberry Pi on the local network and it also shows the IP address. Next I will connect using SSH to the Raspberry Pi. So the command is SSH. The first parameter before the add symbol is the SSH username. After the add symbol is just the host name of the Raspberry Pi, in my case Voron Pi. So tap enter. Now it asks me if I'm sure I want to connect to this host. I'm going to type yes because I'm sure. And now it asks me for the SSH password. And I'm in. I'll move the terminal aside to see the commands from the Kio repository. So to install it, I need to follow these steps. First thing, copy this command and paste it in. Okay, the first command has completed. Moving to the next step. Copy the second command and paste it in. Moving to the final step. Copy step three and paste it in. This starts the software installation wizard for the printer. So currently the Raspberry Pi only has the Raspberry Pi OS installed on it. The software that controls the printer is going to be installed from now on. So I'm going to perform action 1 which is install. So I'm going to type 1 and I'm going to install Clipper first. So I'm going to type 1 again. Going with the recommended Python version so option one and number of instances I'm going to go with one instance of Clipper Now I'm going to add the user to the user group, so I'm going to type yes here. And it's done. Clipper is installed. I'm going to continue with the next thing, which is Moonraker. So I'm going to perform action 2, install Moonraker, yes. Moonraker finished installing. Next, I'm going to install Fluid. So, perform action 4. Proceed with the recommended macros. Yes. Okay, so Fluid has been set up. This is the last piece of software that I wanted to install on the Raspberry Pi. And uh, now I can continue with generating the firmware for the microcontroller. I'll get back to the home page of the vorondesign.com website and under the documentation, software installation, I'm going to the firmware flashing section. I am choosing the BTT Octopus, that is the microcontroller that I'm using. And here I have the instructions for flashing the firmware. So bring the terminal back and run those instructions to build the firmware first. Yeah, but first I have to get rid of this uh, installation menu. So I'll perform the B action for back and Q for quit. Now I'll type in the commands from the documentation. 
for some reason copy and paste didn't work here Okay, so this is the firmware configuration menu. I'll just resize the terminal window a little bit so I can see the documentation because I need to input the data from the documentation here in this menu. First, I need to enable the extra low level configuration options. So I have to select the first menu item. Next, I need to set the microcontroller. From the list, I have to choose the SD Microelectronics SDM32. Next is the processor model. Um, for the processor model, uh, you have to check your board. It should be written on the microcontroller, the processor model. Next, setting the bootloader to 32 kib clock reference in my case because I'm using the STM446 uh, it's 12 megahertz crystal and the last thing is to set up the communication interface to USB now the configuration is complete I have to exit this wizard by tapping on Q and I'll save the configuration Next, I'll run the make command and wait for it to complete. This will take a while. So we now have a clipper.bin file. This is the firmware for the microcontroller. The next step is to take this firmware file and put it on the SD card of the microcontroller in order for the Raspberry Pi to communicate properly with the controller. I'm going to try to find the path for this file first. In the documentation it says that it's under home uh, dash pi dash clipper dash out. Uh, so I'm trying to go to that path. Uh, the problem is pi doesn't exist. Uh, so pi actually needs to be replaced with the username that you set up. In my case, this is my username. And after that, the path should work. So here's the bin file. I'll try and print the path of the clipper.bin file in this terminal. So here it is. This is the path to the file. I started a new terminal tab. Uh, here I'm not connected to the Raspberry Pi through SSH. The first tab is connected, this one is not. So I'm going to go to the desktop and create a folder where I'm going to copy the firmware. Now I'm ready to copy the file from the Raspberry Pi to my local computer. To do this, I'm going to run an SCP command with these parameters. The first part is the location of the firmware file on the Raspberry Pi, and the second part is the location where I want the file to be copied. After entering the password, the file should copy pretty quick and here it is currently the name of the firmware file is clipper.bin so I'll have to change that to firmware.bin in order to do that I'll run the command mv clipper.bin and firmware.bin this changes the name of the file this can be done 
in different ways, but this is the terminal command to do it. Now I'm ready to copy the firmware file to the SD card of the microcontroller. So I'll just open the location of the file and drag it to the SD card. After this is done, all I have to do is insert the SD card in the microcontroller board and power up the printer. That's it for now. In the next video, I'll be taking care of software and parameter configuration. Thanks for watching.